Good morning world. Today I am going to address two issues that often come up. I have um, I've addressed them before in other videos but I still get the question and so I wanted to do a quick video just addressing those two things. The first one is the difference between depression and um, sadness. Well, one of the easiest ways to say it is that sadness can and often is a symptom of depression meaning that people who are depressed often experience sadness however you can be sad and not be depressed sadness and depression uh, sadness can last anywhere from maybe a few minutes to several days depending on how bad things are once we start getting into weeks then it's probably time to start looking more at depression but sadness can last anywhere from a couple days to a couple weeks and even when you're looking at sadness you have breaks you're more likely to have breaks in sadness whereas um you are sad right now but your friends come over you guys are hanging out and you're actually okay you're not experiencing you're not feeling that sadness whereas depression while you may try to put things in there to fill in the time with more positive activities, even during those positive activities, the person is still experiencing some symptoms of that depression. The sadness that's every day usually is a lower grade than what you experience during a depression. That sadness can be so debilitating that a person feeling just everyday sad can get up and do everything they need to do to go about their day whatever they normally would do but a person experiencing depression also has that lack of energy that drains them and can sometimes make the person unable to do their everyday activities physically when you, if you run a test you may see that there's no actual physical reason that you know this person can't get up and go to work but when in that person's body it doesn't feel that way there you may not see any broken bones or any reason that the person's muscles or the person's bones feel achy but when they're experiencing that um, a certain level of depression they may feel that physical pain even though there's no actual medical reason to justify the pain um usually um, we can say a person experiencing sadness is often able to just snap out of it. They are able to get themselves doing certain things that help get rid of that sadness or replace that sadness with happier moments. Depression isn't like that. Depression is not something that you can just um, snap out of it like people often say. You can't snap out of depression. You actually have to work through it. You actually have to deal with the symptoms and deal with the issues. Depression and, and sadness often have triggers, whereas the trigger for sadness may be a lot less pressing than what could lead to a depression. For example, um, you are at a friend's house and you decide, okay, it's time for me to go. Kids, let's get in the car. And the kids that were happy and exciting and excited about playing with you're with other kids now they're sad because they have to leave but of course by the time you get to the car turn on a video they are no longer sad versus you know the child loses their first pet and that child can fall into a certain level of depression because as the sadness of losing the pet grows and becomes a bigger issue and same thing goes with the um, adults yeah we might be sad when we're leaving our friends but we get over it but when you're experiencing depression after losing a close friend or losing a partner you don't just suddenly go get ice cream and everything's okay depression has to be worked through um sometimes there can be a medical reason that contributes to depression it, there can be a chemical imbalance that can contribute to a person becoming depressed and depression is also something that can um, run in families for example they um, we often say that it, on the maternal side if there is a history of depression on someone's um, maternal side um, fam from someone's maternal family then 
that person may be a little bit more susceptible than a person who does not have that history. So what that means is that when the triggers are presented, that person is at a higher risk than a person who does not have the history. It does not mean that the person with the higher risk will suddenly become depressed over everything, or it doesn't mean that the person who doesn't have the history will not become depressed over certain things. It just means, you know, it gives us more reason to be careful and be watchful of certain things. Um, so again, short way of saying it, sadness, it can be a symptom of depression, but it's not always a sign that there is depression going on. But um, when you're experiencing depression, you may be, one of your symptoms may be sadness, but there are also going to be several other ones that are present, including that um, that draining of energy, that lack of sleep, the or oversleeping, overeating or undereating, um, sleeping all the time or not sleeping at all, suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideations, and sometimes maybe even suicidal behaviors. Which brings me to the next one, um, issue, which is suicide. Whenever it happens, um, one of the questions that's often asked is, why didn't someone do something or how come nobody knew it's one of those things that people don't e exactly advertise no while there are times especially um with younger with the younger group where you may find people threaten suicide as a way of getting their way throwing a fit or just getting attention it's not usually or how do I say this? Often, when a person has made the decision, they, are no, they don't talk about it anymore. This is not to say that the ch child or the person who says that they're going to jump in or they're going to kill themselves. This does not in any way mean that when a person say they're going to do it, they're not going to do it. We take every, every single um, threat should be taken seriously because some kids will be saying it as a way of getting attention and others may say it as a way of getting of reaching out or asking for help so because we never and will and can never really know we have to take every single one seriously when a person has made that decision oftentimes one of the things that happens is a person who has been down in the dumps a person who has been weighed down by whatever issues have led them to make that decision that person suddenly feels a level of relief this doesn't mean that the um that the issues are gone it doesn't really mean that they're they have found a solution it only means that you know what they have found what seems to be a way out of their present situation it may not be the best, most effective way of dealing with the issue, but at that moment, that person has found a way out. And having found a way out of it, they feel a bit of relief. They are no longer weighed down because they know that once they carry out the plan, they will no longer have the difficulties that they are currently dealing with. So one of the signs can be that sudden snap where the person was depressed for two weeks or depressed for three years and suddenly that person is the life of the party they are excited or maybe they're not so much the life of the party but their demeanor has changed that feel that feeling of being weighed down has vanished because of course they have now a plan that will help them get out from under that pressure another often noticed signs is the final arrangements a lot of times when the, once the person has made that decision they start you know getting their affairs together uh, maybe they're putting together the paperwork so that when everything is done people will be able to find okay what this is what this is this is where this goes or giving away these prized possessions that they have always treasured you know those collectors items that people weren't even allowed to look at that those things that you could not touch that they are suddenly giving away to people and sometimes it's giving away of things that they actually need for example 
I may use my computer every day and you, it almost seems like I can't function without the computer and out of the blue I get up and I say and I give my computer to somebody who wanted it without talking about, and it's not because I'm planning or getting ready to buy another one it's just I'm giving it away so those are certain signs that could be noted and of course more um, bigger signs would be if you see someone actually making certain plans to, um, to help them carry out the action if you get to that point where someone is getting ready to carry out a suicidal act where you see them okay the person um, suddenly has a gun that they didn't have before and they've been talking about it it's probably time to intervene um, again people often have this idea that if you ask you're putting the idea in somebody's head no you can't really put the thought in the person's head so deep that they're going to start idealizing and acting out on it just by asking them but if you do ask there's a better chance that you can begin a conversation that may lead to taking the idea out of somebody's head so it it's more there's a lot more to gain by asking than there is to lose the likelihood of putting some the idea in somebody's head is not high enough that you would take the chance of not asking of not intervening when someone actually has that kind of plan and of course if you do notice something you ask the question and if it appears that the person is contemplating it or has plans for it if the person has plans or is ready to act it's time to really do some acting to get to really get involved get the um get them baker acted get them into a facility get them the help that they need immediately to help them live long enough to find a better solution and if the person is simply at the ideal idealizing stage there's more option idealizing meaning they're just thinking about it but they have no intention no desire then it's like okay you can you have more time to do things like getting them to a good therapist and things like that but if the if it's right at crisis mode i would say don't wait if the person already has a plan and you know they have a date time and how it's gonna be done you really don't have the time to just sit there and wait for them to um decide okay maybe i'll see a therapist because one if a person is at that level where they're there they've made the decision and they're getting ready to carry it out um future plans is really not a big part of their day so it's time to intervene and get everything done right then and there all right i hope i've answered or clarified certain things if you have any questions again always feel free to ask all right good morning world have a good day